Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate a method to get the previous or after the current row context in a matrix or a table. And this works for both data type, date or text. Without wasting the time, let's head to PBI. Here is the PBX file. And before we start to build a measure, I'll show you the data model first. So I have only one table here. And it's a pretty straightforward. So I have the days in date, date format and the various product type. So in this case, I think I have four or five categories, A, B, C, D, et cetera, and the failures. And moving back to the report. So I have the metrics here. And first, and in this the second metrics, I have the product, which is a text. So first let's try to uh, work with the uh, data type, um, which is date. So as a first step to calculate the previous row, what I need to do is uh, create some measures. So let me expand this here. So the first measure which I've created is a total failures. So it's pretty straightforward. Sum of failures gives me the total failure. And the next step is I need to get the day value. So I'm converting this into value. So what I've done is I've used a max function to get the day value, max of fact failures day. Day is nothing but your dates. Okay, so these are the first two steps. And the next step is I have calculated, I created a measure called as rank day. So if I go back to this measure, which is called rank day, I've used the rank x function, function here. So it's in a modified filter context. So I'm getting the rank and it's based on ascending value. And that's what you see here, starting from one till 12. And this is very much useful in our calculation. And the, the last step here is to get the uh, previous row. So in this case, example, I have uh, the current row is uh, value is 19, the previous is 14. And that's what I'm getting here, row minus one. Same thing applies here, 29, row minus one is 19. And that's what you see here. I can do the same thing for row minus two. So in this case, so I have row minus one, 19, row minus two, 14. So I'm getting 14. How do I do that? If I go to the measure here, row minus one, that is. So first I've created a variable, okay, variable rank. And then I have, I'm passing the measure which I just created, right, rank day into this variable. And then using the calculate of function under the modified filter context here. And then using this variable to filter my uh, uh, values, okay? So I'll do the same thing for row minus three. So as a first step, create a new measure. Let me call this as row minus three equal to, I'm gonna create a variable V minus P underscore rank is equal to, I'm using this rank day here. Okay, so once I create this measure, I'm, I'm just passing this variable to the uh, filter context return. So using the calculate, I need the total failure, which is here. And then I'm filtering my data, filter. I'm using a modified filter context here, all selected, fact failure day. And then I'm filtering my rank day equal to the variable we just created, that is rank. So I've already have two rows, so I need the current row minus three values. So hit enter. So let's say for this value, let's say for this record, 39, I should get the values three rows behind, 29, 19, 14. So I should be getting 14 here. Let's see what we have now bring it to the values. So I have 14, same thing applies for this. So three records behind one, two, three, 19, and I have 19. If, if uh, here I'm getting the previous record. So if I want to get the after record, say for this 14, if I want to get 19 here, so that is one record after this current row, 
I need to simply go here and change the order to descending. And just notice how it changes. So now this one will become 19. Yes, you see, we have 19. So one record after this, that is 29. So I'm getting 29. So just changing this will give you the a different context. And the same logic works for uh, on the text. So he, in this case, I've used day. The reason I have used rank here is because I'm doing a relative reference. If I do a direct subtraction, uh, let's say, uh, day minus two or three, let's assume that if one value is missing here, the numbers will be off. And that's the reason I'm ranking it and then doing a relative comparison. Same thing here. So I have the rank. So I'm ranking based on the product. So again, I've created a value product value, which is nothing but the maximum of each product. And then I've used this here to rank the product based on the product value in ascending order. And then I've used the calculation. So I'll get the uh, current row minus one. In this case, let's say 62 for this uh, record B. I'm getting the previous one for T. So if I want to change it in a different order, that is after, then I need to change the rank in the as a, uh, a descending order. So let's, uh, let's try to create one more uh, new measure here. row minus three, let's call this as for prod equal to create a variable, oops. I just hit enter, okay. Variable V underscore the rank prod equal to I'll be taking the rank product and then return calculate expression is total failure. And then I want to filter my data in a modified context. So here my product expression is rank product equal to variable rank product. So this is three rows behind, hit enter. Now let's see, bring this here. So in this case, I'm getting three records behind, one, two, three, 40. Same thing here, three records, one, two, three, 62. Here it's null because I don't have anything beyond this. If I want to change this into a different order, I can go here and change the descending. So I get the, instead of uh, before, I get the after. So for the 40, one row after this is 62, I'm getting here. So if I want two rows after this, one, two, that is 40, I'm getting here. If I want three records after this, one, two, three, 62, I'm getting here. So, and this works well for the data type date as well as text. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop me a note in the comment section. And thanks for watching.